So your Bible or your, your handout says God wants to download in you the word. And I use uh, particularly that, that indefinite article, the word versus a word. You often hear people saying, I want a word, I want a word. But oftentimes, and, and that can be innocent, and that's fine, but sometimes it's not because you want a word like you want Tylenol or you want to fix. And how many, how many know sometimes the word is not meant to give you what you want? Sometimes we want God to superimpose our desire on him. How many know he is the head? He is not the tail. So you can't be using the word of God to superimpose your blessing on God's purposes. How many know sometimes the word will cut? The word may not be comfortable. And so you got to examine your, your heart to see if you want a word from the Lord or you want the God of the word because a word from the Lord might mean you want to fix but God of the word speaks to the relationship that God is trying to forge with you. And that means you need to be subject to his purposes and plan. There is a difference. Somebody say amen. There's a song that a man wrote. He said, I, I need your glory. I need your glory. Less of me and more, in you. more of you is what I need. And so we need his word. And Jesus is that word. And he's that word for all seasons. Because the Bible says in the, uh, John chapter 1 that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Now you should know in John chapter 1 that the object is the word. In him is life. In who? The word. The word has yet to be manifested yet. He's talking about the word. Let's go there. I want you to go there. So when you read that scripture, you'll, you'll understand the awesomeness of the power of not only words, but the word. Go to John chapter 1. Not 1 John, not I, John, but John. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Who's the him? The word. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him, who's the him? The word was what? Life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not meaning the darkness could not overpower it. Now, why am I bringing the point of identifying and the personification of the word being the subject? First of all, that's what it is. A little bit later it says, and the word became what? Flesh and dwelt or tabernacled amongst us. But why you need to understand the awesomeness of why he's talking about this word that you're reading is because if you look at that verse number five, since Jesus is not physically manifested on this earth, and he's talking about John, that is, the word of God, you can see very clearly in that fifth verse that this word shines even in the very midst of darkness, and the darkness cannot extinguish it. Oh, my God, I hope you're getting the point. I don't care what your darkness situation might be. I don't care how it was caused. You put the word on it, and... It cannot deal with it. No more than a roach or a mouse can deal with light. They must run. They're not comfortable in the light. And darkness has to run when you put the word on it. When the word is in your heart. Now that's very important. And we're going to tell you why it has to be in your heart in a moment. Because you are playing with uh, fire, if you think you're going to use this mighty word and it not be something you really believe. The word on the inside of you opens up and closes spiritual doors. Remember Matthew 18? In that text, we dealt with that before. It's really speaking to the authority of the church. And he says, whatever you bind on earth, you'll 
uh, it is already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on this earth is already loose in the heaven, Matthew 18 and 18. In Matthew 12, it says, For by your word shall you be justified, and by your word shall you be condemned. It goes on. We already talked about Proverbs 18 and 21, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. You can look at your handout. I need you to go there uh, because oftentimes people say, well, all you got to do is say it. No, saying the word of God is important, but just because you say it does not mean it's going to work for you. I need to say that again. Yes, we are talking about scriptures that speak to life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so people will use that as a mechanism of them being able to achieve certain things just by speaking the word. But how many know, even though speaking the word is very integral to seeing the power of the word of God work, it won't work if that's all it's doing is coming out of your mouth. 